What's going on you guys? So in this video, we will take a look at what my books are on the Shopify end. And here I have opened up on the documentation, the information about my books. And on the right, we can see that there are some endpoints that Shopify has mentioned with the method type and the endpoint that we need to hit in order to work with web books. So let's take a look at the first one, which is uh, create a new web book. So inside this, uh, if this is this is the API that we will use to create a web book and listen for an event on the Shopify store. So if we take a look at the curl code here, we can see that there is a topic parameter and there's an address parameter. So the topic parameter is specified as uh, the kind of web book that we want to listen to. So for example, that after you install the app, you want to listen for any orders that come into the Shopify store. So Shopify will fire off an event on your app informing you that there has been an order received and you should carry out the operations as you need. And the address is the endpoint that you have to specify to Shopify to actually hit when that event happens. So in this example, we can see that uh, the order slash create event is used here and the address is example.hostname.com. Um, you don't have to worry about that. I have my own ng-lock running right here and I have updated that in the env file right here and yeah, that's how it goes. So if you inspect the code, you will see that in custom.php, which is in the configuration, I have created a new index right here, which is the webhook events. And inside that I have only taken five webhooks right here. And I have on the left side, I have mentioned the topic that Shopify allows. And on the right as value, I have uh, specified the endpoint. And for these five values right here in this array, I have created the equivalent uh, signature right here with uh, the prefix as the book. So these five routes, I want to keep it open because when Shopify will hit our app uh, with the data, it uh, won't be able to authenticate itself. So that's why I kept it, I kept it as uh, open routes. But one thing that we need to do is uh, in verify csrf token.php we do need to add these into the accept uh, array because uh, we have specified that it could be of any method type whether it is get post put or patch or anything but if it is post in case then uh, we want to be able to exclude it from any csrf token validation that uh, laravel does by itself so that's what we have done here and in verify csrf token i have mentioned all these five uh, endpoints right here and if you want to configure your webhooks then what you have to do is uh, you, you can add a new index right here and you can specify the endpoint and you can specify it in web.php now in webhooks controller i have mentioned these uh, methods right here which is order created order updated which is the same as right here these methods i have created in webhookscontroller.php so all I'm doing here is I'm logging what I'm receiving in the request and I'm returning a response which says uh, status true with status code 200. And if you wish to register for new web books, I have created a job file which you can find it right here inside the jobs folder and inside the Shopify folder. So there are two jobs that I created, configure and delete. So in configure web books, um, you can see that I am passing an ID in the construct function and I'm assigning it to the store ID. So what I'm doing, I'm taking the store row right here and I'm generating a URL using my helper function, which is webhooks.json. Then I'm taking the Shopify headers right here. Then inside this webhook config uh, variable, I'm calling the config function right here to take all the data for the webhook events, which is right here, which is right here. So this will pass me this array right here. and then I can loop over it and the key will be the topic and the endpoint will be the URL. So I will form a body right here like this where the book will be the parent index and inside that there will be a topic, there will be an address and there is a format. We can keep it as JSON right here. You don't need to worry about uh, hard coding it anywhere. And then in the response variable, uh, we can make this API call right here with a post request because uh, on Shopify it does say post right here so this has to be a post request and there's the endpoint and there's the url params not needed there's the headers and there's the body 
and then I'm logging it out uh, what I'm receiving here. So let's test it out. So you will see in web.php, I have an open route right here, which is for my own testing script. And I've set configure webhooks and then ID, which is our dynamic ID right here. So let's fire it up. So I can say here configure and if I hit enter, then it says done. And then inside the log, I can see that uh, response for topic product create. I have kept it as webhook slash product source created. Then app uninstalled, I have kept it as webhook app uninstall and uh, the status code is 201 and it seems to have worked fine. After this, uh, let's test it out if you are actually receiving some webhooks in our app. So one of the webhooks that I registered for is the shop update, which means that if the Shopify store owner updates their shop information, then I should receive a webhook on this event right here. So for this event, uh, I have an, a method right here, which is uh, shop updated, where I say receive webhook for event shop updated, and then I log out whatever I receive in the request, and then I return uh, status true with 200 status code right here. So pretty simple. So let's test it out. So inside this right here, what I will do is I will write here and I will change something to sports and I will hit save. So settings got saved and inside my log file, I should see that I received a webhook for the event shop updated. So here's the array and uh, we can use this data right here and we can update our database table. So this is how the webhooks work. I think that covers it up. And just as a measure, in webhooks controller, you can see that I'm not performing any kind of operation. But in reality, what you should do here is uh, you should have a queue running on the backend. And the moment you receive something here, you should dispatch it to the queue instead of executing it right away because the response time should be pretty quick. Uh, Shopify doesn't wait around uh, for much longer uh, for you to give a response back. So it should be pretty quick. So what you can do, the moment you see something here, dispatch it as a job into the queue and return the response. Only then uh, Shopify will register a successful webhook. If it doesn't, it will keep retrying it until it gets a 200 status response. And it, uh, if it goes on for too many times, then uh, Shopify will remove the webhook. And then in that case, you may have to subscribe to it once again. Yeah, so another thing I did was a delete webhooks job that I created for you. So inside this, uh, you will receive a table ID. So you can take the store and then you can generate the endpoint, which is webhooks.json and then you can get the headers and then you can make a request which is a get request to the webhooks.json endpoint so it will return back all of the webhooks that it currently has registered for and if you take the webhooks index from it then you can loop over it and one by one you can call the make an api call to shopify function with the delete parameter so it will call the delete method on the webhook and you can actually start deleting your webhooks one by one if you wish to unsubscribe for all of them. So you can use this logic right here and you can write your logic uh, own logic after this if you wish to save this in the DB or update in the database table. So this is a good example of uh, how Shopify webhooks work. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. Um, it will help me be motivated to put out more videos like this. And for the last thing, I have this project on GitHub. Uh, the disk the whole project there. You can take a look at the code yourself and you can use it any, any way you want. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, see you.